Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Say, I've got the Singer Industrial Sewing Machine here. I just finished going through. It's the 241-12 rotary hook machine. It turned out pretty nice. I'm just uh, getting it ready here and I'll show you what the needle system is on this machine and do a quick demonstration of its sewing. I just wanted to highlight uh, how it turned out here a little bit before we begin. This is the original needle packet that came with the uh, sewing machine when I bought it out of the basement uh, of the previous owner. And it had 16 by 257 size 16 needles. So this would be the more modern package, which I just happened to have a pack of these. Let me get them up a little closer. 16 by 257 size 16 and that's what I have in the machine today because I'm going to be demoing the machine on this denim from some blue jean pants. This will be the thread that I'm using. I pulled the sticker off the inside of the cone. It is a Tex 40 and that's the important part. This is one of the original bobbins that was in the uh, toolbox drawer of the sewing machine. It's a solid steel bobbin. And uh, I had some of these laying around from a Juki uh, 8500 rotary hook machine and they appear to be the same size. When I, when I went online, this is the size that I came up with. If you get one of these machines, you'll need the Singer number 40264N6. If you watched my other videos, uh, this has the clutch motor on it that I went through, so. It's uh, not really all that loud and this, this lamp that's on here, this gets its power off of the clutch motor. It's a 6 volt lamp so if you buy a setup like this you're going to need the 6 volt bulb. And I've got the knee lift adjusted. Now I mentioned that a clutch motor can be clean and adjusted to come on slowly. A few other things that you're going to want to do is I always make sure I have my uh, seat at a comfortable height. I've got my knee lift set up so that I can uh, operate that comfortably. And um, I like to tip the pedal, the back of the pedal, I like to keep that pretty high when I set machines up for me. That gives me the ability to come on pretty slowly here. And I've got this set on, uh, this is the clutch motor I cleaned. I've got this, it's not set on the shortest, shortest stitch or the longest stitch. I kind of picked the middle of the road to make it a fair, kind of a fair comparison here on how slowly you can bring this on once you've cleaned and adjusted the motor. And here I'm, I'm going through the very thick part of the jeans, the denim here. This is right along where the, your belt would go on your blue jeans. And this is a very, very thick, uh, lot, a lot of layers of uh, denim. And you'd want to be careful here because this is actually where the intersection of this folded over denim from the uh, pant leg comes. So actually, um, if you were using this machine, you could actually use this to sew blue jeans uh, all day long. Maybe that's what it was used for. I don't know if I mentioned this is considered a tailoring machine. A singer listed it as uh, medium, medium heavyweight materials. So I'm going to guess that would be um, a light leather. And this machine will go fast. This will do uh, 5,000 stitches per, it, uh, per minute. I don't sew that fast, but this machine does not have reverse. And, the, and uh, the way that you would lock your stitch is you would just stitch along. And when you have to lock your stitch, bring up your needle. Watch your take up lever when it reaches uh, the highest point. Uh, just, uh, I just use the knee lift, pull it back towards me and stitch over and I've just locked the stitch. Right there I've locked the stitch.
This is what I was talking about as far as the angle of the foot pedal. I like to keep the part farthest away from me up a little bit higher. That's just the way I prefer to have it. And I've got the knee lever adjusted to this angle. That works the best for me. And you can see the clutch motor that I cleaned the other day under there. So let's take a closer look at the uh, hook area. Here's the rotary hook area on the bottom side of the machine and the bobbin case. Uh, it just so happens that it stopped in the position where the hook was just picking up the upper thread. And um, this is very similar to the Juki 8500 rotary hook. This does is a self-oiling machine. There's the oil pan with the cork gasket. Uh, I don't plan on putting oil in the machine. I will just come underneath here every once in a while with my little oil bottle and oil the points that I know I need oiling. And same thing on the top side. I will oil those up from time to time. I don't, I prefer for as much as I'll use this, I don't want that oil pan full sitting in my house all the time. And I did oil this the other day on the top side and the oil was dripping out through here so I know oil is flowing through the machine properly. And it's running nice and smoothly as you can see in the demonstration. What you're looking at now is the hand wheel of the machine which is marked here for different stitch lengths. They decided to go with just the ABC type scale here. And the way you set your stitch length is you uh, let me get my hand in here. You press, you press this button on the top and as you rotate the hand wheel it'll click into uh, where you currently are and then you can just adjust it. it. You'll see an A on here. That would be your longest stitch. And then as you go this way the stitches will get shorter. And uh, it says it'll go anywhere from 5 stitches per inch to 30 stitches per inch. I think that's going to about do it for this one. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's kind of funny, I bought this machine when I spotted it online, basically for the table. And after putting a lot of time into going through it and cleaning it, I'm going to keep it set up this way. But I have measured uh, the base of the machine and uh, I can lift this right out and go ahead and put a 3115 right into the same table. I just haven't checked yet to see if the uh, knee lift would line up or not. But uh, I'm enjoying using this machine the way it is enough that I'm going to leave this one set up the way it is and uh, I guess I'll just go looking for another tabletop. Nothing wrong with buying more machines. Uh, that's kind of what I do. So uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one. See ya.